being able to have your pulse on where the market's going, I think is what separates a real manager, CEO, entrepreneur from a guy that knows just how to manage people. Hey, transportation community. This is Luis Lopez, aka the Freight Guru. And today we got a special guest by a person by the name of Christoph Neiman, somebody I've known for a very long time and somebody that's been in the freight forwarding industry for almost 17 years. Christoph is going to be discussing today Freight Forwarding 101 for all those guys out there, millennials. Uh, guys coming out of high school, potentially uh, four years in college, and are interested in get, getting into the freight forwarding industry, this is the guy to know. Christoph has been in the industry for a very long time. Christoph has moved and evolved in the industry in the past 17 years, and we're going to be dis discussing, discussing today all those caveats with him. Christoph, great seeing you. Christoph, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're living right now? Yeah. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Christoph Niemann. Um, I'm uh, 36 years old. I'm married. I have a child living in Panama, in Panama, not Panama City, Florida, in Panama, Panama in the, in the country for the past uh, year and a half. How has uh, how's it Panama been through the COVID <coughs> pandemic? Um, it's been very uh, drastic, uh, very drastic measures. Nothing compared to here in Miami where you can, yeah, um, I mean, Panama, we were locked up pretty much for six months between March and uh, I would say November. And then there was a second lockdown uh, between January to March. And now it got a little bit better. But got you need to understand that, that we were physically locked up in our house. Gotcha. So you're physically locked up. And yeah, you, you lived in Miami previously from coming from Panama. Right. So you go from living in Miami where everything's open and... Basically, everything's normal. Uh, we, we did have some lockdowns as well. April last year, we definitely locked down. Um, and then uh, you moved to Panama and it's just complete lockdown for almost a year. Yeah, almost, almost for a year. It's been a very uh, complicated year. Um, I mean, we just moved recently to Panama and uh, I think I've seen my office um, two, three days. And uh, Got from it. there on, I was, uh, yeah, locked up in my, in my apartment. Got it. So... For all those out there, Christoph, and we cater really to millennials, uh, shippers, freight forwarders, brokers, guys that are in the trucking industry that either are dispatchers. Uh, we want to give out information in order to improve either how they create revenue and grow, grow their business or provide avenues for people to maybe find another angle to get into another industry or sector if they're in transportation or interested in being transportation. So- okay. Can you tell me a little bit about how you physically got into freight forwarding? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, um, it was I was almost it was almost a destination for me. My 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 father, my grandfather, my uncles they have all worked in freight forwarding at the time. I knew that business. Let's say not. I knew the business technically from a technical point, but I knew the people that worked in the business. I I was with my father in the office, with my uncles in the office. I got to know that business from that standpoint. Um, um, yeah, and then then to be honest, I wasn't the um, the best student in school, and uh, I decided to follow my father's footsteps and uh, become a freight forwarder. Gotcha. And when you mean freight forwarder, because freight forwarder can mean a lot of different things to a lot right. of different people, what do you define a freight forwarder as? What what do you essentially to make it simple? If you had to explain it to your son or your daughter, what is a freight forwarder? Um, we have basically um in charge for transportation of what, whatever you whatever you see if you a bottle of water um glasses we organize transports for for companies um, gotcha for small for so companies. would you say for example that bottle of water or right. now now you're you don't own the assets that are moving that bottle of water either by air ocean or or road so are you like the middleman between the person that owns that bottle of water and the person that needs to purchase that bottle of water. So you can you can 
a lot of people, I would just explain it to them like it's a UPS, but on a much bigger scale. So, so they have an idea. So you put something in an envelope um, and you ship it out it's, and you organize it right. from a UPS standpoint. But we, I mean, for the majority of the part, it doesn't fit in an envelope. We ship it in a container. We ship it uh, on a pallet. And we organize the entire um, supply chain from 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 the door to to the customer store. Right. And how has freight forwarding changed since you started in the industry compared to now? Like, what is the main thing that's changed in in freight forwarding? Um, what has changed? Um, a lot of things have changed. I believe um, from the people, from from technology, from the environment, from compliance, from. I mean, it's been 17 years nearly, and um, there, there's a lot of changes. I mean, you, um, the biggest change is probably that it became more driven towards um, productivity. And so it's it used to be, it's still a very people-oriented business, but it became very to a point where, where you measure more, let's say, uh, not the relationship, uh, but you start to measure more productiv- productivity for the customer, you you add more value added services. In the past, yeah. it was rather you book a container from A to B and you were good. There was no reporting needed, no KPIs needed. There was no technology, some sort of needed. There was no, yeah, there was no reporting. And now you you, you don't just sell a service from one point to another point. You sell in a complete package of services. You Got it. That makes sense. Supply chain. So, so freight forwarders are evolving into more technology companies as well, you would agree? No, absolutely. I mean, um, you need to... Um, Remain innovative, right? If you if you would think that, it, like I like the romantic behind freight forwarding. It used to be it used to be very like okay, it's a people's business, right? Like relationship based. Relationship is still very relationship based, um, but but you need you, you the best relationship in this world doesn't help you if you don't have the solutions. And with the technology, do you feel that the technology has evolved to a point where? you as a freight forwarder either now there's two let's let's go back for a minute so there's two types of freight forwarders there's the large enterprise freight forwarders Mm. and then there's the small freight forwarders the the mom and pops right if you were in the freight forwarding business today and you were consulting uh the small not you know not large companies do you think that they should be out there making their own software in order to cater to providing a service or is there now technology out there where freight forwarders, small mid-sized freight forwarders can find technology to actually provide value added like KPI and reporting? No, I believe there's uh, there's already, there's enough stuff out there. I mean, you can develop something on your own, but uh, I mean, you know best it, it costs, it costs money. Yeah. And, and, yes. and, and the quality <clears throat> control of it is hard. So, so you would, right. you would think that it's, it's best to go out there and find Software that's already been developed and, and utilize that unless you're a large enterprise customer, uh, well, a freight forwarder. If you're a big freight forwarder, you're better off probably to create your own uh, your own um, um, platform, right? right. Um, but uh, so freight forwarder, small freight forwarder, you have um, yeah, you have enough options out there today. Right. And going into now, getting into freight forwarding. Right. So, if you could give somebody that isn't in freight forwarding now, but mm-hmm. likes the industry, thinks that it's a, because anybody who's in freight forwarding has always said, once you're in, it's really hard to get out, right? Like it's almost impossible. So it, there is always a demand. You can go from one freight forwarder to another. You're always going to find a job. It's very, very rare that you can't find a job if you, if you want to grow in freight forwarding, you know, uh, as long as you're working hard and you're doing all the right things and you're doing, you're doing all the management things that you need to do in order to, to scale so for the guy that's 19 to 22, that two years in college, not sure what he wants to do, needs a job, how does he get into freight forwarding? I mean, it depends also on your, on your character and what you want to achieve in life and what, you, what, do you want to, what do you want to do in 5, 10, 10, 15 years, like you say. I mean, it's not a business you start and then you get out of. Um, the majority, like me, is uh, stuck in that business and I will be gladly stuck to be in this business for the next probably 35 years so right. what, what like people like freight forwarding the, the beautiful part of freight forwarding is that you <clears throat> get involved with so many different companies different different sectors of businesses if you talk about uh, from a perishable customer to a farmer customer to an automotive customer it's there's different commodities that you move along the way and you you learn from the customers as well what kind of business do they do and how it's connected with one if in each other it's it's very interesting if that's that that's one point and then the second point is do you like to deal with people do you like to deal with 
I don't know, with uh, uh, suppliers, with truckers, uh, with um, with with carriers, with um, uh, third parties uh, that provide warehousing, for example. You like to do this. You like this this interchange with the people. You like to do this. And the third part, which is why I got into this business, to top it, it's because you have the opportunity to to get out of your country. Okay, you get out of your country. You have you learn about different cultures and you grow not only professionally but you can grow in the business also personally so you get out of your comfort zone you move somewhere and it doesn't necessarily need to be another 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 country it could be a different city Got but it. you get out of your comfort zone and um, and that helps you grow and progress personally as well as professionally Got it. And when, when in, in regards to that 19 to 22 year old, would you agree for him to start with a large enterprise freight forwarder? Or do you think it's best to start <clears> with a <throat> small freight forwarder that is going to allow you the opportunity to maybe do more things quicker? Um, it, it, it also, that it depends. Um, <clears throat> it, there's, there's no, there's no better. I mean, um, it depends on the freight forwarder. You need to find a good freight forwarder that ethically behavior is, it's, it's on par. I mean, it's it's compliant, and you need to find a company that that really has a vision that you like uh, like to follow, and that give you a clear path in the future. Like not a company just offering you a job and say, "Hey, it's gotcha." Like, yeah. You mentioned something about all these different sectors in freight forwarding, right? And I think that's an interesting topic because it's the same thing as domestic transportation, um, and which I've been in for seventeen years as well is I've always felt like when you try to bite too much of the apple and try to do too many different things, you tend to fail. So in transportation, I think it's crucial to be niche. Find sectors, like you said, find commodities that are consistent with the type of commodities you're running because normally the pickup delivery times, the people, they're all asking for the same thing. But if you are managing flowers one month, and then managing, you know, raw material the next month, you know, it's it's too broad and you're not able to be consistent with the KPIs right. and the requirements that flowers needs compared to raw material, right? Right. So, and also flowers are in reefer trailers and raw material would be in a dry, dry van. It's a totally different type of trailer and, and equipment that you're using on domestic transport. So, or a freight forwarder. Now let's talk about the guy that wants to open up his own freight forwarding. Mm. You think specialize in something or start off general, find whatever you can in order to start your business and create revenue? Or do you find markets and sectors that are difficult, highly compliant, high, high barrier of entry? Uh, it, it depends again. I mean, um, you can you can open a niche freight folder, but you need to have a base of uh, connections that will provide you with uh, the base of your business, right? And then you grow it from there. So uh, if you don't have that, then then maybe you look at uh, become a um, a freight folder that is doing uh, FAK uh, freight all of uh, freight all kind. Um, yeah, FAK. So freight of all kinds yes. is F FAK. Yes, gotcha. And that could ha that could be personal effects as well. That depends on the, on your business setup. I mean, um, usually the freight folders are not doing personal effects. Gotcha, gotcha. So when it comes down to in the past 17 years, you've done different roles. You've right. done a bunch of different roles. Right. What is the role that you always gravitate towards and say, man, you know what? I really miss doing this. Um, probably um, operations, operations. That means uh, to, um, yeah, to... Uh, to work on to work on documentation to be in touch with the with with the customer on the other end that is also just placing the booking and to have that interaction so you don't so you have this daily interaction with the customer and so we do this at, at my level we have that too but always on a very high level you know, or on a higher level and what i miss the most is maybe to just hear from from the operations and how they feel and what they're doing and what they go through and because you learn a lot, you learn a lot from from the operations on what is not working well, and you can tailor solutions towards that. Right. So we, we have these discussions, but not 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 enough. I, I feel. Yeah, in, in 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 domestic trucking, it's kind of the same thing. When you're when you're booking on the spot market in in on load boards, and you're doing it every day, and you're in what I call the trenches. Right. Uh, 
you you have a very fast pace kind of understanding of how where how and where the market's going. But when you're thirty thousand feet up and you're not in operations and now you're managing and delegating, you normally have a hard time keeping your pulse on where the market's going. And I think that happens in every business. Uh, being able to have your pulse on where the market's going, I think is what separates a real manager, CEO, entrepreneur from a guy that knows just how to manage people. Yeah. So that's that's the part that I miss the most of it. It's not that we're not doing it. We, uh, I do it. Uh, I, I still do it with the operations uh, from time to time. It's just uh, your time management. Um, right. Yeah. It's not. It's not only just tailored to that. And when I was in operations, there was you get involved with it and you give suggestions and you, you come up from it. And I feel like that's very important if you want to be in that business that you learn from the operations and you grow up and you go go your steps and you understand what your customers' needs are and you you have that feeling and you have a good understanding what you can offer um, in a short, mid and long term. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that interview with Christoph Neiman. There's actually a second part to that interview that we'll be showcasing next week. On top of that, we'll be doing our first pod decks, which is a game about me asking our interviewer a question. So stay tuned. This is Luis Lopez, aka the Freight Guru, signing out.